so now we will move to Cyril Petrus' talk on Clifford algebra and trace techniques. Thank you for um, the invitations. So what I wanted to say is that um, people know me in um, Exact or Extensor for this package. Uh, I've worked with a uh, long time ago when uh, Jose uh, Martin Garcia was still uh, in, in France and it's called Expand. And just to, I will just talk about it like a, a few seconds and then I will, uh, I will mention my talk. And this precisely is working as um, Juan Valiente mentioned before, it's using conformal transformation to, 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 to compute the perturbation around Minskovsky and then promoting them as perturbation in cosmology precisely using conformal transformation. So really it's again, it's just to say that this possibility of doing easily conformal transformation is exact, is really powerful because that's how it's, it's possible to do easily perturbations in, um, in, uh, in exact. So what I wanted to talk about today is not about this work where I'm very familiar, but it's something I'm really not familiar with and which is among the exact example notebooks. So maybe um, Jose didn't mention, but in the documentation here, if you, if you go there, you see there is check out the great collection of contributed exact example notebooks. And I think it's a great, it's a great collection of, of several notebooks to give you ideas of what you, can, um, what you can do, to give you ideas of what you can do with exact. And among these notebooks, there is one notebook that now I'm going to, to go through and detail you, which is about Clifford algebra. And the reason, the very reason why I wanted to talk about this notebook is precisely because this is one of the um, area where I was the most surprised to see that exact would help. And so I'm, I'm, I'm used to, to, to use exact with general relativity, manifolds, covariant derivatives, all these sort of things, conformal transformation, Ricci curvature, Riemann curvature. But here, I, I will show you that you can use it to, to, to manipulate Clifford algebra in a way which is very different from what you can have from the spinner package. So the spinner package, the previous speaker uh, mentioned it and show, showed you how it works. You can see the soldering form and you can see explicitly the indices of the, of the algebra, so the, uh, which are the indices of the fiber, of the spin fiber. Here I will show you that with the help of many people who work in uh, exact, uh, we've been able to, to, to deal with Clifford algebra in a, in a um, index independent way. So it's very it's very strange the the, the 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 decision I took today to talk about that because precisely the power of exact usually is is to to show you the indices you know usually the mathematicians they use this notation where you you don't see the, the indices of the objects of the tensors of the and so on but what we want to do in physics we want to have indices such that we know what we're talking about but here I will show you that even if exact was designed to show you the indices it can still be used to do some very powerful and interesting computation in an index-free notation. So this, this notebook was done with the help of Leo Stein, who did most of the work for the Clifford algebra. And then I've stolen some uh, input by uh, Jose Maria Martin Garcia, who helped me a lot. So there is a typo here, it's R. And there is uh, also some, um, some input from Alfonso Garcia Parado, who's going to talk about uh, various things today. And even I've, I've stolen some methods by uh, my colleague Guillaume Fay, who's going to talk about uh, a few other things today. So the idea is that, I'll go through the, the package very rapidly. The idea is that you define a, a manifold, but we're not going to use the full power of exact of this position dependent manifold with covariant derivative and so on. We're, we're be, just be going to use the tangent space at a given point in space time. And we're going to, to do some manipulation just at this given point of space time. I have in mind that we're going to work in four dimensions because what we want to do is Clifford algebra for particle physics, for instance. So, I define the dimension to be four, but not with an equal such that I can change the dimension sometimes. But I have, even if the notebook works for more general dimensions, I will show you and explain just things, how it works in dimension four. So I define a metric, which is flat, because I have in mind that I want to work in Minkowski and do particle physics. And I will use the, of course, Minkowski signature with minus one. So the first tool, which is interesting in uh, exact, is that you can define a product. You see the options of defined product. There are many things which are, complicated, at least for me it's complicated. The, the, the idea is that you first define an identity, okay? Define it, it's an identity inside uh, as a tensor, but with no index because it's there on the manifold, but it's just a scalar. And then you define an abstract product with the, the in the exact, which is with def product, which we call AP for algebra product. So this is what uh, Leo Stein did in, in his notebook. And you said that it's a graded product, so it's going to give you an algebra and all, those, all, all these things. And then you define a tensor, gamma, which they are going to be the gamma matrices, the gamma Dirac matrices. It's, the, it's going to be the, the Clifford algebra. And you say that the grade of the tensor is one, and that's 
to say that what essentially to say that what we're going to specify is not the commutator but the anti-commutator of the gamma matrices. And we say that it's a complex. That is, there is a dagger. There is a notion of dagger of this uh, matrix. And that, that we're not going to specify the the um, the spinorial index like we do in, sp in a spinner package. We're just going to work with gamma i. We're going to do products of gamma i. So that's why we have defined this product. We're going to do traces. And I'm going to, that's going to be my, my third part. And the second part, we're going to also to do irreducible decomposition of this product. So the first part, I will show you how to define products of gamma matrices. Second part, how to do irreducible decomposition. And finally, how to do traces. And that's basically all, all what we need when we want to do particle physics. So for instance, in this algebra product, we have a commutator. So you see that when I define it, it's like that. When I do expand commutator, it's the usual commutator. I have the anti-commutator and I have the super commutator, which is the anti-commutator. So now, of course, I need to help exact and tell him, tell it, sorry, that uh, some things are part of the algebra and some things are just color. So I'm saying that when there is a plus, you know, you have to look at the, um, if it's an algebra element on each of the terms, you have to say that it's a scalar, then you can, you know, factorize it out and all the things like that. So for instance, you see, if I do the algebra product of five times gamma times two times identity times gamma with these definitions, the factor 10 is going to go in front, and I'm just going to have this algebra product of gamma ij, gamma i. At this stage, if I if I use two canonical, for instance, here I have the algebra product of one uh, gamma matrix with another, nothing happens because I didn't tell exact what to do with this product. It's gamma i, gamma ij, and so be it, gamma i, gamma ij, or gamma ij, gamma i. If I do two canonical, it stays in that order. So, of course, we didn't tell anything about the about the algebra. So, you see, again, if I put three products of, of gamma matrices and I do two canonical, nothing happens. But still, even when nothing happens, you can check the Jacobi identity. Okay, so the first thing you can do is to define, you have to define what is the algebra structure. So that's the part which I, I took from Leo Stein. So the algebra structure, you say that basically you build this rule that the anti-commutator of gamma i, gamma j is two times the metric times the identity in this space of algebra product. And by saying that, now we're going to really to specify what is the what is the algebra structure. So here it's just an equality, and I'm going to use that to define a, a, a rule. So here with commute, commute algebra rule and using this uh, this algebra structure, then I'm able to, 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 to create this rule, which is, which is that whenever you have gamma i, gamma j, then you can replace it by minus gamma j, gamma i plus twice the, 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 the metric. And now this is very th this is the very basic usage of this uh, algebra product because now there is a low cost canonical canon canonicalization that we can do is that whenever we have a product of gamma matrices, we can reorder them with, let's say for instance, increasing order of indices. Say we, we, we define uh, that the order, if they are in alphabetic order. So you see here, I'm defining what is a disordered product. It's disordered if the indices are disordered and then I can say that, okay, see, for instance, this is che this is checking that gamma i, gamma ij is disordered because when I read from the right to the left, I have j i and it's it's going to be ordered if it's in order i, j. So this one is disordered and this one is ordered. And now the low cost canonicalization is just sorting these things by putting, whenever it's in it's in the wrong order, I, I'm going to use the algebra structure, so the anti-commutator, to put them in the correct order. So if this is what it's doing, sort Clifford algebra product is, putting everything in order using the algebra structure. So for instance, you see, if you have gamma i, gamma j, of course, it's it's going to stay gamma i, gamma j. But if you have gamma j, gamma i, then it's using the algebra structure to sort it in the correct order at the price, of course, of having the, 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 the metric appearing here. And just with this with this very, very basic, um, uh, very basic uh, rules, you can already check many uh, simple usual identities. For instance, of course, you can check that what is the commutator of gamma i, gamma j, you know? It's using the anti-commutator to, to find an expression, and this is what you get. You can check what is the anti-commutator. Of course, it's just to, to, to check that the rule you have, that you've put in your system is, is there, so that's the rule we've put, and we recover the rule we've put. But then you can check what is the um, product of two gamma matrices if you contract, for instance, the, the space-time index, gamma, gamma, gamma A times gamma minus A. It means that there is a contraction, an implied contraction with a metric. And just you know, separating the metric, forcing the, the structures, forcing the, the, the product here, and then using the rule, and you can find that then it's equal to, of course, the dimensions times the identity. And so, so we can build a rule to say that, from that we can build a rule that whenever we have the product of two matrices which are contracted, then we replace this by identity. 
And this is very powerful because the way exactly, so here there's a subtlety and you see that exactly it is really clever in the way it's designed. For instance, now I have the product of gamma, gamma A, gamma B, gamma minus A. So if I sort the, 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 the product, it's going to be gamma A, gamma minus A, gamma B. So like the second line. But then the, 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 this rule of replacement, which apparently is only for a product of two gamma matrices, can be applied inside the, the product, even if though the, even though the product is a product of three matrices. So this replacement, the replacement of this rule is very clever because even if it's not written that there is a product of two gamma matrices, because it's inside a, a product head, then exact knows that it has to consider that any sub part of this product can be seen as a product on which this rule will apply. And th so that's why it's working. And in the end, you get the simplification and you get the result. So this, this is super powerful. You can see you can have product of four gamma matrices. You contract the free, the, um, there is a contracted index, which is simplified once you have put things in, in the correct order and then it goes on. Okay, the next thing you can do one, when you want to do particle physics is that you want to define what is gamma five. Gamma five, if you know what is the dimension, is just the anti-symmetrized product of gamma matrices. So basically, it's the Levi-Civita with all the indices contracted with the gamma matrices with uh, well with as many gamma matrices as the uh, as dimensions. Here, there is a subtlety. If you do that, then the normalization of gamma hat is not what you want. You have to put some i factor or minus one factor. Okay, so I'm not not going to 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 enter to the details. But in the, the way to deal with that is that you can enlarge your algebra structure. And instead of having just the gamma matrices, then you can have the gamma matrix, gamma matrices, and the gamma five matrix. So now you have to specify three commutators, gamma, gamma, that we have already specified, gamma, gamma five, and gamma five, gamma five. And this is what I'm doing here. I'm saying that they anti-commute, gamma, gamma, and gamma five, and that gamma five, gamma five, roughly, the anti-commutator is going to give you something proportional to identity. So here is the structure, you can see. Gamma, gamma matrices, the anti-commutator gives the metric. Gamma and gamma five gives zero, and gamma five square gives something related to identity. And th then you can do, you know, and then you can say that you can force the rule that gamma five square is proportional to identity, such that you have automatic simplifications. For instance, if you have a product of gamma five, gamma five, gamma, you want the gamma five square to get to, to be removed, and this is what it, what is done here. Okay, so the second part of my talk now, I'm going to talk about irreducible decompositions. So this part was taken from um, a notebook, which was called gamma.m. I, I can't remember where I found it. It was written apparently by Olaf Gran, and there was some, um, some input, some, uh, I found an input by, uh, I found a notebook from Alfonso Garcia Parado and Jose, who gave, gave this notebook to me. And I adapted it to apply it to this algebra product, which uh, was defined by, uh, by Lohstein. So the idea is that now, instead of having gamma matrices, which has one index, that is, which is tensor valued, uh, matrix. Now it can have several indices, but this in these several indices, it has to be fully anti-symmetric. So for instance, you would have gamma i, okay, which is one index, so it's obviously uh, anti-symmetric, but then we can have gamma i, gamma ij, gamma ij, for instance, or gamma pq, which is anti-symmetric in, in its two indices. And then again with three indices, four indices, and as many indices as you want. And these are a, an irreducible basis for this uh, algebra. Uh, for this algebra, so it means that at some point, what you want to do when you have a product of gamma matrices, you want to be able to decompose it as a sum of products of completely anti-symmetrical gamma matrices. Okay, here there are, these are some subtleties about the gamma five, which I don't want to uh, enter. But then, what 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 this is uh, doing? So um, I'm going to show you the results. So this is a very complicated uh, algorithm. And I don't know how it worked because I took it from this gamma.m. At some point, I knew how it worked, but then I forgot. So you can see that, well, it's, it's not obvious how it works. It's, it's quite complicated. There is a, a recursion and there is a, okay, so it's, it's quite complicated how it works. We even had some debate about some typo because here you see there is a, it's a, a written that I've put a correction. So I think we had some debate with Jose and Alfonso and we agreed at some point on uh, what to put so, so that it works. And so then you can, you can check that it works. So for instance, let's see how it works because that's what we want to do. So for instance, if you have the algebra product of two gamma matrices being anti-symmetrized times two other gamma matrices being anti-symmetrized, and then you know what is the, the irreducible decomposition, then you apply the, the previous command, which is completely automatic, you get, a decomposition in terms of things which are proportional to identity or gamma matrices with two indices anti-symmetrized uh, anti or uh, a gamma five matrix. Again, you can even do, for instance, if you have a product of four ma gamma matrices and you can have it as a decomposition of something proportional to identity, something proportional to gamma matrices with two indices, 
gamma matrices with four indices, which are then replaced in terms of gamma five. And of course, you can check that it works. For instance, if you have something which is fully anti-symmetric and you expand it in terms of its gamma, like that, and if you do the gamma decomposition, you recover what you have put to you. Of course, you have to check that it works. And again, with three indices, if you decompose what this means, it means the, the complete anti-symmetrization of gamma matrices. And if you, you, you ask what is the gamma decomposition, of course, it recovers that it's it's a gamma, it's a it's a fully anti-symmetric gamma matrix with three indices. So this is very powerful. So these are these are some subtlety with the gamma five. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, okay, so this is a, so so that, that's the first part you can you can do when you have this this uh, algebra. You have product of gamma matrices. In order to have a unique way to write it, you want to be able to decompose it with this irreducible decomposition. Another thing you want to do when you do particle physics is that you want to do traces of gamma matrices. And so what I, what I've done in this notebook is that I've defined a, 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 I've defined sorry uh, I've defined a formal trace yes I've defined a formal trace of a gamma product. So what I call spinal trace is a head, and that's why I'm using the, this this feature of exact which is def inert head. So I'm defining the abstract because since I have not put indices in my gamma matrices, I've hidden the algebra structure. Then of course I cannot do a trace like I would do with with a um, the spinner package by contracting spinner indices. So I need to, to use an abstract trace and to do to, to put this abstract trace, I'm, I'm using this inert head, which is an abstract trace. So this abstract trace has to be linear. It has to, when you have the sum, it's a sum of the trace or there are a few rules. And for instance, you can see how it works. For instance, if you have a tensor, for instance, if I have a, a, a tensor, which is V, if I contract V with my gamma matrix and I put this abstract head, then then you can see that I have uh, the, the the trace which is only on the gamma matrix because for the the algebra structure v is just a, just a scalar. So the trace of gamma i v i is just the trace of gamma i times v i. So this is just formal. I'm just telling how to put a trace on an expression such that the trace is only on the gamma matrices on the on the product of gamma matrices. For instance, here you see you have v i v j times identity, and the trace is only on the identity. Now there is a very complicated part. Which I think I took from um, I think I took it from Jose again. This part it's about how to compute the traces. The, the the first thing you can you can do is that once you have the trace of a given number of gamma matrices, you can you can define a tensor which which is by definition the trace of a given number of gamma matrices. And this time it has no algebra structure because it's a trace. So it has to be just a purely space time uh, a pu purely space time tensor. But it has some symmetries because the trace has some symmetries and the gamma matrices have some structure. And so with the help of Jose, at some point, we had found that it's the group is quite complicated, but it's um, we, we had found what it was a symmetry group of a, of, a, of, a, um, a product of gamma matrices. So I'm going to define TRN as the trace of N gamma matrices, and I'm going to force what is a symmetry group of this, of this tensor. So I still don't know what is the trace of a, of a given product of gamma matrices, but at least I know the symmetry group. And this already means that I can make some simplification. So see, these are, for instance, the, the, the groups which we build for the, the trace of a few gamma matrices. So these are complicated groups. And now knowing what is the this group, for instance, if you have the trace of gamma i, gamma b, gamma c, gamma d, plus the trace of gamma b, gamma c, gamma d, gamma a, just knowing what is the structure of this uh, symmetry group, then two canonical, is able to, to work on it because these are just space-time tensor and that's what uh, X tensor is doing, is simplifying uh, tensors, knowing what is the symmetry group of the uh, of the indices. Of course, if I do that, I still don't know what is the, the trace, but I can I can simplify traces. So for instance, if I have a trace of, of uh, three gamma matrices, just from the symmetry group, I know it's zero. If I have a trace of four mat gamma matrices, well, it's the trace of four gamma matrices. But I still need to know. I, need, I still need to compute what is this trace, and that's where the Guillaume Fay enters. So the Guillaume Fay was going to give a talk a bit later. He explained me something which is very interesting: is how to 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 compute things which are quite time-consuming recursively, and to store the the results of this recursion such that you only compute them once. So. We're we're going to implement essentially this kind of um, this kind of uh, sorry it's a, it's a bit further yes this kind of um, this kind of uh, recursion so we're going to use that we know we know the trace of n indices in terms of the trace of n minus two indices basically that's the idea so we have a recursive algorithm so which is the which is there a recursive algorithm to compute the trace of n indices in terms of trace of n minus two indices but if we don't store the values in the meantime, we're going to lose a lot of time, we're going to waste time. So what, what Gamefight um, showed me is how to, to, 
to wrap this in some function, which I call compute gamma traces, and which is going to store the values as um, down values. So here, of course, it's very complicated. I took it from Guillaume Fett. But the only important part that you need to, to, to know is this down values. You see, it's, it's computing the traces recursively from the recursive uh, formula. But once it computes a new value, these new values are, are stored in down values of compute gamma traces, such that it's only, it's only computed once and for all. So for instance, for instance, you see how it works. Computing the trace, the first time, the first time it computes the trace, okay, it takes some time to get a result. For instance, this is the famous trace of four gamma matrices with A, B, C, D. You get a G, G minus G, G plus G, G, the usual result. Then once you ask it again, it will be immediate because it's already stored as a result. Okay, so this is to, to show you how to, to, to compute traces. And here, this is a wrapping function such that, you know, you have a product, you apply formally the head saying, I want the spinner trace, and then you compute the trace. See, for instance, I have a product of four gamma matrices. I apply the, the spinner trace formally, and then I compute the trace, and I get a result, which is, of course, it's just some product of gamma matrices, some product of matrix, sorry, some product of matrix, or uh, some Levi Civita, because that's all we have on the space time. Now, and uh, before finishing, just uh, one minute, I'll just show you. I've applied this to complicated, comp complicated problems of particle physics. I'm just going to show you on a very basic problem how it works. For instance, you have a a process with one plus three, uh, particle one and three gives particle two and four. And you know that at some point you're going to, 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 to use the momentum P1, P2, P3, P4 of these particles. They have a given mass. So for instance, you put the rule that P, P contracted gives you the mass square. You define the, uh, the, the famous slash notation, you know, when you have a P contracted with gamma, you know, it's going to be P slash, it means a P mu times gamma mu. And then you will have, when you do the computation of, I don't know, uh, S matrix or M matrix uh, of uh, trans uh, transitions and probability of, uh, from one particle to another or reaction probabilities, at some point you will have some traces of product of gamma matrices. So at some point you will have some algebra product of gamma matrices. You put formally a spinner, a spinner trace, you compute the trace and you get the results. For instance, if I have this operator, which is slash P, so it means P times uh, P slash gamma plus uh, times slash P2 plus the mass one times slash p. I mean, some something which happens in the in the in the, in the due to Feynman rules. Then you do the gamma de decompositions. So, so, sorry. Then you have two me two methods to to find the results. Either you do a gamma decomposition and you read visually what is the structure. So, for instance, this operator with this gamma decomposition, I can see that there is things which are proportional to identity, things which are proportional to gamma, and things which are proportional to the anti-symmetric product of gamma i gamma j. I could have other products with gamma five, but here I don't have things with gamma five. So from this, I can read the various coefficients. The other methods, and I'm going to finish on that, is to, 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 to multiply by the operator on which you want to know what is the coefficient and take the trace. For instance, I want to know in this operator, what do I have in front of the identity? Then I multiply by identity. I take the trace, so I put the trace, compute trace, and I get the coefficient with some, okay, some normalization. I want to know what's in front of the gamma matrix. I multiply by the gamma matrix. I take the trace and I get a result. Then I want to show that there is nothing which is gamma times gamma five. I multiply by gamma and gamma five, take the trace, compute the trace, and I get zero, meaning in my operator, if I was to do the irreducible decomposition, there would be no gamma mu gamma five. And this goes on, and then I've applied it to uh, Compton collision, Klein-Nishina formula, all these things, and that's what that's why it was very useful for me, because I wanted to keep the the spin. Uh, the um, uh, I didn't want to sum on the initial uh, spins and the final spins of the particles. So I had something which is more general than what you you could find in the um, particle physics books. And so for this, uh, exact was very powerful and very helpful. So just the, the fact that you can hide the um, the, 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 um, the spinner space, but still have it there through this algebra product, where I found it very powerful. So I'm, I'm going to feel that. Thanks. Thank you very much, Cyril. That was very interesting. Um, and um, it was a good example of how exact can be used in an area for which it wasn't prepared to.